welcome to this fly tying video. Today we're going to tie a pheasant tail nymph. I hope you're all staying safe in these strange times and what better hobby to do when you're in lockdown than tying a few flies. As I've seen and heard there are quite a few beginner fly tires that are just starting out and that's why I've decided for this video to tie it the pheasant tail nymph. The original pattern dates back to 1958 and was created by the English river keeper Frank Sawyer. His original pattern used only two materials which was pheasant tail fibers and copper wire. Here I've tied my own variation using only these two materials copper wire and pheasant tail fiber and without using a bobbin. So this is tied by hand and as you can see you have the pheasant tail fiber that is the tail, the body and the thorax cover and the copper wire is giving weight building up the thorax and also keeping the pheasant tail in place. The fly that we're tying today is a variation of this original pattern but using some modern materials to make the fly a little bit stronger and in my opinion also a little bit prettier. Before going through the materials that we're gonna use on this fly I wanted to quickly go over the anatomy of the mayfly nymph. As you can see on this side on this drawing of a mayfly nymph we have three main parts so you have the tails, you have the abdomen with the gills and you have the thorax with the legs. And if I put up the pattern right beside it, you can see that we have these three main parts. So we have the tails, we have the abdomen, which is made out of the pheasant tail and ribbed with copper wire. And then we have the thorax and the legs are represented by the dubbing. Now to quickly go through the materials that we need for this one, I will go from the back to the front, listing all the materials that you need to tie along with me. So to start off at the back, we're gonna tie in the tails. These one on the original pattern were made from pheasant tail. I'm gonna substitute this material for something a little bit stronger. What tends to happen on these flies is that the pheasant tail breaks. It's not the strongest fiber. So what I'm gonna use instead is some soft tackle. Soft tackle is a generic term for all hen capes and saddles. And in this case, I'm gonna use some India handback. This one you can get in a lot of different colors. So you have the natural ones, dyed ones like this brown or this olive one. For this variation that we're gonna tie, I'm gonna use the brown one, which works really great with the copper bead. Then moving up the fly, the next material that we're gonna tie in is our rib. And this serves two purposes. So the rib is gonna be some copper wire this one is in the color March Brown. And what the rib is gonna do is to add some strength to the pheasant tail. So this one we're gonna counter rib this, going over the pheasant tail to make it a lot stronger. And this is also gonna create the segmentation that we want. As you saw before on the drawing of the mayfly nymph, the abdomen is really segmented. So this look we're gonna achieve with our tying wire. The second material for the abdomen or the body of the fly is pheasant tail fibers. These ones come in a variety of colors from the natural ones to dyed ones like this golden olive, yellow and dark olive. You can get these in almost any color. The one we're using today is a dyed brown one. The last material is gonna be the dubbing for the thorax. In this case, a copper colored ice stub from Samplefly. But this material you can substitute for a lot of different ones. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a few different variations that you can do with this fly in order to suit your waters and your insects. The hook I have in the vise is an Arex FW561, which is a traditional nymph hook barbless. And the nymph hooks are usually a little bit longer than the dry fly hooks. And this is gonna give the pattern the right proportions. Nymph hooks are also usually a little bit heavier wire. So this is gonna make your fly sink a little bit faster. This one I'm tying is in the size 16. And the bead I'm using is a 2.3 millimeter tungsten bead in the color copper. 
The thread I'm using is the Nano Silk 18 knot in beige, and I'm gonna start right behind the bead, putting down a layer of thread going back to where the barb usually is, so right before the bend. And here I'm gonna cut off the excess. If you would like your fly to get down a little bit deeper, you could also use a few turns of lead free wire right behind the bead, push it up inside the bead, a little drop of super glue, and then tie over this. Now for the tails, I've selected one hand feather that is a little bit longer. Take out six or eight fibers or so. The naturals have three tails, but here I'm gonna use a few more. So put them 90 degrees from the stem till the tips are aligned. Get hold of them and then just tear them off. Now for the length of this, we want this to be about half to three quarters of the shank length. So I'm gonna take this measure, transfer it into my left hand, tie it in. If it's a little bit too long, you can either just grab these again put them a little bit further up or what you can do is to get hold of the butts and just pull these a little bit until you're happy with the length. Then what I'm gonna do in order to not have a bump right here at the back I'm gonna tie these fibers right up to the bead then I'm gonna pull these back and tie down over them again. This is gonna create the taper and also you're not gonna have a step right here at the back. Now time for the rib. Here I'm using a 0.2 millimeter tying wire. This one is in the color March Brown. So I'm gonna tie this in right up inside the bead and I want to keep this on my side. So I'm gonna tie this in the whole length of the body, keeping the wire to my side. And we're gonna get down right to where we tied in the tails. Now the pheasant tail. Here I'm gonna tear off about six fibers or so, put them 90 degrees from the stem, tear them off. These ones, we want to tie these in by the tips. So trap them with your thread one turn and then pull these till you get just the tips on the other side of the thread. And then touching turns going up the whole length of the body. Park your thread right behind the bead. In order to really secure the pheasant tail with wire, I'm gonna counter wrap the pheasant tail. So I'm going towards me. So I'm going under the hook and towards me. Touching turns, try to not get the pheasant tail crossed. So you want the fibers to lay right beside each other all the time. And then when we get up right behind the bead, we want to do one turn over, one turn in front, one turn over in front and repeat this a third time. This way the pheasant tail is locked and we can cut off the excess. Now when we go with our wire we want to go the usual way, so away from us over the hook and this way we're gonna counter rib the pheasant tail making this really strong and here we want to do open spiral turns about five or six times or so right up to the bead as well. Here put a 90 degree bend into the wire and tie this off. A few times 
and then you can either cut this away but what I like to do is just take this and spiral it or helicopter it away and now we already have two parts of the fly so we have the tail and the body with the rib and these little fibers that you see sticking out from the pheasant tail these are gonna represent our gills the last material is the eye stump this one is in the color copper and here you don't need a lot these are long strands and you want to get these onto the thread and when you dub you want to go just in one direction if you go this way and this way you're not gonna wind up the fibers or the strands around the thread so just go one way now we're gonna build up the thorax and this is also gonna represent the legs I'm just gonna add a little bit more building up the thorax and once you're happy with the shape of the fly so the thorax we want to be a little bit wider than the abdomen and also we want a few of these strands sticking out representing the legs then a few turns right behind the bead and the last thing to do is to whip finish five turns or so pull tight and cut away and here if you would like to you can also cut a few of the longest fibers away but there we have it this real simple pheasant tail pattern and this is going to represent most of your mayfly nymphs and this is really the idea of this pattern the original one the one that was tied with just two materials the idea behind this is to keep it simple even though this newer pattern is using a few different materials we have the same id with the tails at the back the slender tapered abdomen and then a little wider thicker thorax this one doesn't have the legs represented but this one has it's up to you how far you want to take this pattern and now I'll show you a few variations that you can do with this pattern starting off with this one so you can see that we have the same shape but on this one I've used a little bit of tinsel on the body as well to give it a little bit more of a shimmery effect and then up at the thorax I've used some peacock dub instead of the copper one or you could do the same pattern but adding a thorax cover and thorax cover in this case is some swiss straw covered with uv resin and on this one as well i've used the peacock dub and here we're getting closer to the american pheasant tail then moving up another really known variation of this pattern is the flashback pheasant tail so this one is using almost all the same materials as you can see from the side but on thorax i've used some pearl tinsel and a little bit of uv resin and this is gonna imitate the emerging mayfly with its expanding thorax and here you have a little bit of shimmer on the back with this one and if you would like to take this one step further you could also tie in some legs and here for the legs this is the same material as for the tails so just a little bit of soft tackle here I've also used peacock hurl and a little bit of uv resin as well and lastly you don't have to tie this pattern only on standard nymph hooks you could do it just as well on a jig hook and if you decide to substitute the soft tackle for some coq de leon and the peacock dub for some pink dub you would have a french nymph this is to show you that you can change up this pattern in so many ways you could use different materials you could use different hooks you could use different sizes of hooks you could use different techniques to get this but at the end the most important part as shown on this original pattern it is to get these three parts right the tails the abdomen and the thorax 
I hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe it will inspire you to create some of your own variations of this pattern. If you do so, I would love to see it. You can find all my social media information in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, happy tying.